Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. In this last few days of Surat Al Kahf, a reminder that Nabi Musa salam for all of us because Allah gives the most beautific and the highest example. So that nobody can come back and say, but I'm an alim shaykh, I'm a shaykh, I'm an aristocrat, I'm a rich guy. Where Allah is saying, I gave for my prophets out of the top six who are the highest of prophets, I'm going to give you an example now. And gives to this the example the Sayyidina Musa who speaks to Allah So the knowledge in which she must have access to is immense and a sign of humility Ya Rabb is that I want to seek out this new reality that's come to my heart. I won't stop until where these two rivers meet and he meets one of these servants. And Allah wants to clarify it's one of these servants. Sayyidina Abbas Khidr salam is the 11th shaykh in the Naqshbandi order. So Sayyidina Abbas Khidr salam's secret is flowing in the shajara because he's, he's on the He's on the ticket. Because of that his secret flows in the tariqah and I want to meet one of your servants. And the summary of this story till we get to where we need to talk about. And Allah describes that this servant that Nabi Musa met was one whom we taught the rahmah and then he attained the knowledge. So these are not the servants that go to mufti school, these are the servants who attained a rahmah means they attained a connection and a reality to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of that rahmah and that mercy, Ayatul Kareem itaqullah wa alimukumullah because of their entry into the rahmah, the love and the all-encompassing love of Sayyidina Muhammad dresses them, blesses them and begins to teach them. So this servant is being taught by the heavens and Nabi Musa wants that reality. At least this was his intention when he said, I want Ya Rabbi from these knowledges I won't stop my life until I reach to the reality of these knowledges. So we say at the beginning is, you came with intention to seek knowledges and realities. Don't forget your intention. This is not a story about Nabi Musa this is not a talk about Sayyidina Musa. We are nobody to speak about Sayyidina Musa This is a story about myself. I came to seek out realities. The these are things I've never heard of. These are realities that I know my soul is hungry for. But when he met one of these servants it didn't work a normal way. If you go to the masjid and they talk about Surat Al-Kahf will be the most absurd explanation on earth that you can hear. That it's good to argue. You see how they argued? Because they have no tasking, no, no training. So you never try to hear from a regular person but you hear from the stories of awliyaullah. Sultanul awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Isham Kabbani, Shaykh Adnan Kabbani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil. They teach us the correct understanding of this reality that he wanted knowledges. So our intention at the top was, I'm seeking this rahmah, I begged Allah for this rahmah, I begged Allah for this ni'mat and this key into the heavens. So when you're asking yourself every day, why, 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 you see you asked for it is why. If you didn't, check out and see if you can do that because when you try to run <laughs> something else follows you. There's no running, there's no checking out, it's like Hotel California. You can check in but you can never check out. <laughs> so it's like one of those revolving doors like in the, in, in the Outer limit sci-fi movies, they say, okay go, he says, okay bye bye I'm going and you go into a revolving <laughs> door that never goes out. Wherever you do you come back in, no you're still here again? So this is just a deception that you think you can actually leave. When you asked for it, you prayed for it, Allah enrolled you in it. 
So then now this dialogue with Sayyidina Khidr he starts to lay out principles. He says that, you can never follow me. So the first meeting with the teacher is pretty tough. His warning to the student is, you cannot follow me. Not that, oh please come have kebabs, have baklava, have some teas, have everything, what would you like, how can we make it easy for you? Your email didn't get in answered quickly, we're sorry, we're really sorry. Allah's giving an adab and nobody can even keep the adab that Allah has asked for. So when you find them nice, it wasn't Allah's order for them to be nice. It was Allah's order for them to be very aggressive in how they teach. But who can take that? Now you'd be sitting with one person and that's probably your own child because they have to go home with you. <laughs> so what Allah gave then is the example. Sayyidina Khidr is telling the great Prophet of Allah no, I can't teach you, why are you here? I want these knowledges, I want this knowledge to make myself rushed. I want to achieve a new level of realities when to be rushed is to admit that you're not ripe. Rushed means you're green. Right? Because you're saying, I want to be ripened in realities, I want to achieve a, a new state of, of being. And Sayyidina Khidr is telling Nabi Musa, you can't. How can you have patience with that, you, that which you don't have knowledge of enough? Or you have a little bit of knowledge and it's not enough for you to be patient. It's going to be a, a situation in which you to become anti in that knowledge. So means what Mawlana Numani always says, little bit of knowledge is very dangerous. The little that you think you know is going to be your biggest wall into their reality. So that was the first warning, Allah gives the adab in Surat Al-Kahf, not shaykhs making up their own uh, understandings and making up their own stories. They go by Ayat al kareem and Allah gives the adab. That if you wanted to accompany those whom been taught by heavenly knowledges, one is to empty your mind, empty what you think you know, take a path in which you admit to yourself, a lifelong path I know nothing. Why? Because we'll use this tool for the rest of our lives. If I reach a state in which I think I know something, how can Allah open a new horizon for me? Oh Ya Rabbi, thank you, thank you, I, I, I got it. Then there's no more growth. So this tool that we learned we use in all our day to day, I know nothing Ya Rabbi. An abdukul ajeezu da'if wa miskeenu zalim, Ya Rabbi astonish me, astonish me. Ya Dalil al mutahidi that you are the guide of the bewildered Ya Rabbi means that bewilder me. <coughs> That I know nothing, you, you make every cause, you make every opening, you are the guide of the bewildered Ya Rabbi, bewilder me. May put me into the ocean of be bewilderment in which every moment the knowledges that are coming are higher and higher and higher. And that took with a, an, an understanding of emptying the heart, I know nothing, I know nothing. Whatever you want to teach me, I know nothing. And that's why then their system is not a discussion like with professors where as soon as you talk 20 people start to talk back. In the middle of your talking they're talking back and objecting and th that become like you know just a wild. It's a system in which they convey what has to be conveyed from their heart and the audience listen to it. If they liked it alhamdulillah, if they didn't like it Allah warns, be patient. Because the warning at the beginning of the journey is, you cannot accompany us because you don't have the knowledge, you won't be patient with what little you know on these subjects. So be patient and lock yourself to the shaykh because you're about to run. One thing happens, you're out. And that's why they ask you to support. If you're not supporting, you're running. Because the first time you don't like the talk you're 
that's finished, I don't know what he just said, that's… I'm against what he just said, I'm out of it, right? So they want to lock you. When you support and you support it and you support it and you support it, you've enrolled. It's like you're in a, in, a, in a college program, you paid your tuition, you're not going anywhere until you got what you paid for. I contributed, I want the knowledges, I want the reality. So now you're bound and locked into that understanding. Then if you're patient in the subjects you don't know, then Allah begins to lay out what happened. Nabi Musa came and began said, just you be patient, I'll, I will be patient. Be patient with me and I'll be patient, I, will, I won't talk, I won't talk if, if anything happens. He said, then don't talk until I give you permission. So if you have a problem in something that I'm doing, you had no permission to talk. Not in if you're doing something wrong that you can abuse people, but in the subjects of knowledges, something that may be contrary to the knowledge or understanding in which the way you look at that knowledge, be patient. Take a life of being patient, learning how to chew on your patience, your anger. And, and bring your, your level of anger down, the level of your waswas is down. That's why you meditate, you do your salawats. If there's something was said that, Ya Rabbi I don't know why it was said, why did he give the order like this, why when I asked the question he said, no you can't go. Whatever the issue is in your life, that's where they want you to now fight. What is the da'wah we say? Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabib al-Asbab, Ya Mufatiha abwaab. Musabib al-Asbab means Allah is always going to make a condition to bring out your character. So you'll ask a question, you'll get an answer you didn't like Musabib al-Asbab because Allah wants to see how He's going to react in that. Is He going to give you the big, you're finished and I don't want to see you again or I'm going to stay quiet. I'm going to stay quiet, I'm going to stay quiet. Then Allah in Fatih Abu I'm going to open a door for you. Without this understanding of the school, without you remaining patient, remaining quiet, be patient, be patient, be patient, Allah wants to open a door for you. Not that you grab the, the teacher and, and shake him to, to listen to you and your point of view and your understanding and just, I wanted to tell you because you needed to know. No, because you wanted the reward from Allah So Allah will always cause a condition in which there's a, a door to be opened. If you yelled and screamed and got angry, made a comment and cursed and whatever you wanted to do, that door didn't open, you just… that became a much harder path for you. So they lay this principle down for us and teach and warn that there'll be many conditions and as you get more into the tariqah it become a thousand times more difficult because the doors that Allah's are op the doors that Allah is opening are much higher doors year 1 was easy everything was so beautiful everything was fantastic Every, i can remember all the memories was so great everybody hanging out uh, year 25 it's armageddon Every test is insane, every moment is unimaginable, everywhere is a landmine on how to talk, how to have adab, what to say to this shaykh, to that shaykh, to this shaykh, to that shaykh. It's like Armageddon. So it's not supposed to be day one. Day one was to make it nice and happy for you, it's to be exciting and great because <laughs> that's Allah's marketing, right? So then when the dialogue we're summarizing so that it's, it's, it's very easy to understand. As soon as the adventure begins for Nabi Musa, come on be patient, don't worry, don't worry. And Sayyidina Khidr is unseen. <laughs> you have the benefit of seeing your shaykh. Huh? We'll take it up a few notches because he's Ulul Azm, he's the great prophets of Allah he sent him to an unseen teacher, that's why they passed. 
Or oh, how could you, if he was, Sayyidina Khidr was just standing there on the rocks, you don't think he would see him? He's journeying for his lifelong journey to, to reach to where he wants to reach. No, his teacher was an unseen teacher and he had to go back to the sign of Al-Hayat. He said, where the fish came to life that was a sign for me because this teacher of mine is not seen. He's one of Allah's unseen servants and can only be seen with a good heart, with a good heart. So means then you don't even see the reality of your shaykh unless you're looking at him with your heart. Say, who's this man? Who's he talking about? He doesn't even say Arabic correctly. You're sizing him continuously. Doesn't even speak Urdu. <laughs> right, Jabbar? He's like, why do I gotta follow this guy? Doesn't even speak Urdu. He doesn't wear shower kameez, he has no respect at all for him. <laughs> everybody judges everybody, see. But what Allah is warning us on this path of realities, it's not easy. People were dying and giving their lives to reach heaven. Allah said, there is, a, there is a path, a tariq, if you follow it, it will open heaven on earth for you. Because everybody gets heaven when they die because of the intercessions and all of the good characteristics inshaAllah, but you wanted heaven on earth. So then Allah said, you're going to be with people that you can't see and He's going to train you on how to see them. If you don't see them, your testing is going to be much more difficult because you're looking through your physical eyes and, oh, what's this and how's this and why's his life like this and why he eats like this and how he's like this. And it wasn't about that, it was about you to train to see him with your heart. So that when I sit in his majlis through my heart I see a portion of his reality and I see who he's sitting with. And that's when Nabi Musa said, ah let's go back because I'm going to see him because that's his heart is pure, he's a Prophet of Allah When he went back he saw his unseen guide. Now his test you can understand how much more difficult the testing will be and the first test they came to a man who had a boat and his unseen guide tells him, get into the boat. And this is in his community, can't be too far from where <laughs> Nabi Musa is practicing his risalat. He gets into a boat with an unseen guide and the unseen guide starts to break a boat of another man. <laughs> is a Prophet of Allah is breaking a man's boat and that boat is the only sustenance for this man. So then you can see his, his level of anger and because this was how Shams Tabriz was training Sayyidina Jalaluddin that you're very rigid in your, your sharia because sharia of Nabi Musa was eye for eye. And they're rigid in their understanding and Allah wanted to soften him and give him an understanding that this boat that you're breaking, he's breaking a man's boat for no reason, for no, no, no crime was done and nobody can see his unseen guide and his community is watching him break the man's boat. That's one lesson. The main lesson for tariqah is that that boat was the man's way of sustenance and he warned him that we have to break this boat because a devil or a bad king is coming and capturing everybody's boats. Mean shaitan's coming to take your rizq, shaitan is at, at a continuous state to convince you that your money should go to his people. He doesn't tell you to send your money to a charity you know building casinos if you're a Muslim. But he says, come to this Wahhabi mosque building ceremony and build one of those Wahhabi organizations. And that's how shaitan operates with Ahlul Sunnah. He doesn't tell them to do completely haram forbidden things. He fools them with what appears to be charitable and noble causes. And that was the warning that shaitan will always come after your rizq. 
to take the barakah from your life and what you've developed of your life, he want to develop his people and his murids and make his empire strong with satanic belief and satanic aqeedah. Every time you give to their organizations, you give to their, their foundations, you give to their charities, it made them much more stronger against Ahlul Sunnah. And that's all that that warning was. So then what tariqah comes and begins to teach that Nabi Musa was told, break a hole in the boat and make the boat to go down. And we've talked for 10-15 years on that subject. So the first level of tariqah is to break their boat, not destroy it so they can never make a sustenance again. But as soon as they come into tariqah Allah will begin to lower your sustenance so that you have a clear understanding, this sustenance is not yours, it's my paycheck, it's my job, it's my cleverness. No, no, if their du'a come through whatever high job you had they can get you fired to the lowest position in the company, no value for them. You go up and down like an elevator, next day they can promote you to be the, the, the president, the CEO and next day they can put you in the mail room. Allah has no limits, it's all written by Allah's program. When that sustenance drops they have your full attention. Why? Because shaitan is playing with the sustenance and the, the servant to have a, a taslim and submission. They begin to understand when that sustenance is dropped there's a direct one for one correlation between their good actions and their sustenance. They do bad things it's cut, there's no fish. They do good things the fish flow. Like the spider web we said before at the beginning of the surah, our life is to make a beatific web means our zikrs, our awrads, our practices, those are dear to Allah When the web is beautiful He sends the fly. When Allah sinks the boat now they have the attention of that student, they don't deem themselves independent and that they can do whatever they want to do. So it's submit and make the servant to submit and taslim, not to the shaykh, shaykh is nobody, it's Allah the shaykh is merely a, a guide to teach you that, oh you've been enrolled in this school, welcome. Here's how Allah is going to be training us because Allah is training them the same way. You do bad, you see nothing. You do good, alhamdulillah the, the gates open. So that we rely on Allah Then when Allah want to give more and we've been trained in that way then our whole life is in that understanding, Ya Rabbi alhamdulillah I do my zikr, I do my practices, I do my awrads, I do everything I can so that my life is based on taslim. Not that Allah wanted me to become a pharaoh where He gives me everything, I deem myself to be independent of everything and anyone I can do anything I want. He would have then destroyed your faith. But when Allah loves you, sends you to this guidance that's why then the first step was deal with their sustenance. The sustenance has to go down and begin to discipline the student. That don't let your boat ever to fall in the hands of shayateen. And then what Nabi Musa then started to argue with Sayyidina Khidr why you broke this boat? Before I explained all of this they were arguing, why you broke this boat? Why? Because he's concerned, nobody can see his unseen guide. And all the people can see out in the lake is, why is this Prophet of God, he's breaking this man's boat? Imagine then the, the, the concern he has, he's, he's worried now his whole community <laughs> he's breaking somebody's boat that they can't, uh, did no crime for. So then inshaAllah an understanding we go more into it on Friday and Saturday but the first level is the boat. And when Nabi Musa came and that's always the reminder, he came and he asked Allah that, I want these knowledges and Allah the tongue can't even describe it. He didn't think he was signing up to break boats.
he thought it's just I'm going to seek knowledges. I'm going to sit with a servant and he's going to sit there and give me tafsir after tafsir. Oh which one do you want to know? Oh I'm going to hear, here's your tafsir, here's your tafsir. He didn't have any understanding that this is about breaking a boat. That's what we said at the beginning of the journey, he asked Allah I want these knowledges, I won't stop until where the two rivers meet. Very specific of the knowledge he wants, he meets with Allah's servants and is now bewildered that what is a breaking of a man's boat, an innocent man's boat, I am now being ordered to break his boat, what does this have to do with me seeking knowledges? The irrelevance of what he wanted and what he deems he's being tested with. This is food for thought for us. So don't think you know the path, don't think you, you signed up for something and your email not being answered, this not happening the way you wanted, this not happening. Nabi Musa thought he's signing up for, for knowledges, he's on a, a boat with an unseen guide breaking it. And for us Allah said, what do you think I have in store for you? Means our life is, is always about testing and we're tested in something in a direction that we don't see any relevance of why we're being tested here, it's opening something there. Because after they fought and they separated, Sayyidina Khidr and only Allah come back to teach, you know that boat you complained about and you made a big fuss about? And you said that this was something you know forbidden because your eye for eye understanding and the boat is, is, is not something that you had the right to, to damage. Why did your mom put you in a boat which was definitely infanticide because any human being put an infant that can't, can't help themselves in a little boat in a basket and send them down the river, it's surely infanticide that you're trying to kill an infant. But didn't Allah have a wisdom? in saving you that way. So he thought he's arguing now with Sayyidina Khidr about him not knowing sharia, not knowing what he should be doing about a boat. He said, did you come here to test me or you came to be tested? I mean these are deep subjects for us and the people of tafakkur. The Nabi Musa came for a reality. But in reality he probably didn't come for that knowledge, it seemed like he came to test Sayyidina Khidr Salam. Then why are you doing that? Why are you breaking a boat? The question is why do you care why I'm doing this? You asked to meet the servant, now accompany the servant. The path is not clear, its testings are not clear, it's not dollar for dollar, you do this and you get a knowledge. No, no, they tell you do this and maybe that knowledge will open. And the test is not relevant to you understanding the shaykh or to understand Sayyidina Khidr, it was Nabi Musa's own life being reflected to him. Had he had patience to sit and wait that would have been understood. The basket that you were complaining about your mom put you in, why are you upset about this boat that's been broken? We pray that Allah give us patience and understanding in the tariq, istiqamu fi tariq that to be firm on the tariqah and the immense complexity. We would hand out flyers and think that if we handed out flyers people would come to our zikr. And then people would come and I say, oh mashaAllah did you come from the flyer? Say, no, 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 not a single person who came, came from the flyers I handed out growing up. And the example for the shaykh was, Allah doesn't want you to think that you did something for him and that you do this and people will come. Allah wanted you just to do something good and listen as a reward Allah will send whom He wants to send. It's never one for one, otherwise you would think you have control of the heavens. You do this and the heavens gives you that, you do this and the heavens gives you that. No, the shaykh may say, jump through here, jump through here, jump through here, you jump and then if Allah wants to give you, He gives you. But it's never one for one. Nabi Musa signed up for knowledges, he was out breaking boats. Hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa was Siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.